Can you buy an exotic car for under £10,000? Today we're going to answer that question by looking at five in particular that are about as exotic as it gets for under that price range. I just did 20,000, so this is the same video again, but at half the price. Do hit like if you like this kind of content, subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Now a quick reminder, we're talking about exotic for under 10k here. We're not going to be setting the world on fire as we might have done with some of the other price ranges, but we're going to do our absolute best. With that in mind, here is the Porsche Boxster 987S, the second generation Boxster which offers a lovely Porsche package for a very reasonable price. A good friend of mine actually recently got one of these for around 8 grand, and other than a bit of preventative maintenance, he's been having an incredible time in it. After 2006, it came with a 3.4 litre flat 6 engine which makes 290 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.2 seconds and before that it had a slightly less powerful 3.2 litre block. The 987 was the first gen to come as both the Boxster and Hardtop Cayman but sadly the latter is typically more expensive especially in S spec. No bother though the Boxster gives you the freedom of a convertible to cruise around in summer with the roof down and still gives you the lovely Porsche handling dynamics that the brand has become known for. In S spec it got that larger engine, sportier exhaust as well as a bunch of components to tighten the feeling and responsiveness. It also has more typical Porsche looks in the 986 with the normal headlights and certain features designed to be reminiscent of other Porsches like the Carrera GT. You will only get a 987.1 for 10k though but it's still a pretty big update from the 986, particularly around the interior. On release Porsche claimed that only around 20% of the parts on the 987 were shared with the 986 and from my perspective this makes a lot of sense given how much more modern the 987 looks in comparison. They'll run you around £7,500 today at the bottom end and 10k will get you a 2006 model with around £80,000 miles on the clock. Servicing costs are typically around £300-£600 per year on these and sadly that 3.4 litre block is known to be more prone to the dreaded IMS bearing failure and bore scoring. I would definitely check out the full buyer's guide on Porsche Club GB if you're serious about getting into one though. Next up we have probably the most exotic manufacturer on this list, Maserati, with the Quattroporte, a fast four-door saloon with a Ferrari engine in it, which I simply have to mention because I always think it's so ridiculous you can get a detuned and modified version of the engine that you'll find in a bunch of Ferraris for less than £10,000 with a whole car attached. That engine is a beautiful sounding 4.2 litre V8 which produces 394 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5 seconds, not bad for the money, and it's always a flamboyant car with its Pininfarina design. It was in fact designed by the famous Ken Okuyama at Pininfarina, the same man responsible for legendary cars like the Enzo 612 and 599 Ferraris and the hallowed first generation Honda NSX. This is the fifth generation Maserati Quattroporte and in the US even its release was a highly exotic event, Pebble Beach in 2003. It lasted all the way through to 2012 with updates across its lifespan including the move to the 4.7 litre block for 2009, similar to other Maserati cars from the same era. The focus was clearly on being a fast executive saloon with its beautiful interior that screams Italian splendour despite its less than perfect build quality according to some owners. My favourite little known fact about these is that the luxury department store Neiman Marcus who do an annual Christmas catalogue had their own limited edition Quattroporte in it in 2004, of which just 60 were made, all in wine red, with special ivory luxury leather on the interior and more wine red piping, very Christmassy. At the time, in 2004, this special edition was listed for around $125,000 and they sold out in less than 15 minutes. This for me really drives home the luxury or exotic part of this car, but of course they might not be your first consideration as an exotic. They'll run you around £5,500 at the bottom end and 10k will get you into a 2006 model with around 70 k on the clock. There is plenty that can go wrong with these, but the typical issues come with the rattly timing variators on startup and overrun, oil leaks, water leaks and known battery issues too. Servicing costs can also be relatively high, but not as bad as an actual Ferrari of course. Taking third on this list we have the Jaguar XKR, a lovely grand touring sports car from Jaguar which isn't particularly uncommon, but is genuinely a great looking car which I think one day in the future will be considered as a classic as the previous generation XK8 was already well on its way to gaining that kind of state. These come with a 4.2 litre supercharged V8 engine which makes 420 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 4.9 seconds. That's genuinely not bad performance for under 10k although at times this has been dubbed an old man car but I think it would be pretty cool to own at any age as they're surprisingly large with reasonable presence out on the roads. Like the Maserati this is a very famous designer responsible for its looks, Ian Callum who took inspiration from cars like the highly sought after D-Type and the E-Type as well. It was initially named the spiritual successor to the E-Type 
type by many but then so was the previous generation and so was the f type after it so maybe everything's just trying to become as iconic as the e type who knows for me it's actually more reminiscent of cars like the aston martin db7 and vanquish both of which were also designed by ian callum it comes as both a coupe and convertible and personally i prefer the former but i definitely understand why the convertible might tickle your fancy it will definitely look a lot more at home cruising the french riviera with the roof down you'll only get a pre facelift within our price range and though i do think the facelift looks a lot better i don't think that the pre facelift is any way bad looking as it's a well-known car though it might not come across as exotic as the maserati might for example today these will run you around eight and a half thousand pounds at the bottom end with 10k getting you into a 2007 model with 100k on it it is worth mentioning that you could also get a normal xk for less than that if you're not fussed about the performance that 4.2 liter block is very much the better block to go for in terms of reliability at least over the 5 litre with many reaching over 200,000 miles and on schedule maintenance history on these is key with regular oil changes and the likes so I hope you guys are finding this video interesting if you are then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new and let me know if there are any other exotic cars that you would have included in this list instead of the 5 that I'm giving you just missing out on the top spot we have the first generation Audi RS6 arguably one of the most impactful fast estates ever though it's worth mentioning that you won't actually get an estate within our price range rather slightly less sought after saloon which is still a lovely car it just doesn't have the same prowess as the estate either way you're getting a 4.2 liter twin turbocharged v8 engine which makes 443 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds which is pretty decent for a car from the early 2000s that we have an even more powerful car taking the top spot i think this is a great looking fast audi with its wide wheel arches low and solid stance larger but clean five spoke alloys and twin exhaust alongside the split front grille which i personally really liked on them the interiors too are typically minimalist as with most early 2000s audis a style that has pretty much carried on through to today as well for me though what's special about this car is what it did for us here in the uk after being released in 2002 the estate version in particular kicked off a wave of people realizing that they could buy a fast family car not just a fast car and a family car i think this versatility is what has helped the rs6 to remain one of the most popular cars through to today and it's also why the advance has continued on to later generations with the saloon we see here disappearing off of audi's menu that also for me though means that one day these saloons will probably have their own time of gaining classic status these will cost you just under eight thousand pounds the bottom end nowadays with 10k being enough for a 2005 model with 100k on it but it's worth mentioning that most will be found around the sub 15k region there are many known leaks on these from use over the years with turbo failure being the key risk as a result the engine bay is also known to be quite tight so any problems can cost you more than you might expect with other cars taking the top spot on this list is the mercedes sl55 amg a competitor to the generation of the xkr previous to the one we spoke about in this video so it's another grand touring sports car but this time with a hard top convertible roof and some really pretty looks with absolute future classic qualities given every previous sl generation has gained some kind of love later in life the sl55 comes with a 5.4 liter supercharged v8 engine which makes 500 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds and it's genuinely mad that you can get a 500 brake horsepower car for under 10k now this is a car that was 90 grand new which would be around 160k today adjusted for inflation so when you think that you can get them for under 10k now it's actually insane that's a drop of over 150,000 pounds and it makes sense because outside of the absolutely silly cars the sl55 was meant to be a range topper in the world of mercedes sports cars it looks like a sports car should low sleek supercar-esque but reserved enough to not quite reach those kinds of heights it has a really cool set of standard alloys on it as well with the multi-spoke rims being a pretty timeless design with the roof down it gets even better looking in my opinion as a car it ended up as the safety car in f1 and the plaything of many wealthier people around the world and in fact jeremy clarkson owned one of the first models back in 2002 which he only sold in 2014 typically you'll find these in silver as there are just so many in that spec but you can actually find way cooler colors if you look hard enough including some lovely blues and reds if you do go that way you definitely get a more exotic looking car in my opinion this is the most expensive car on the list though starting at around nine thousand pounds with tanker getting you a 2002 model with 100k on the clock the active body control system has been known to leak hydraulic fluid and there are other electrical issues that have been mentioned by owners on forums including with the roof operation and traction control system 40 pumps as well seem to be a consistent point of failure and so there you have it five exotic ish cars for under ten thousand pounds not bad at all if you want to see some more exotic cars then do click up here subscribe as well down here huge thanks to you guys for watching to the patrons for their support and i will see you in the next one